World Service. I'm Tanya Mosley. I'm Robin Young. It's here now. Funding for Here and Now comes from WBUR Boston and your NPR station. And from AVFX, Boston-based and offering virtual event services coast to coast for events, meetings or announcements to bring them to life. More at avfx.com slash virtual. Outdoor dining took over city streets during the pandemic, but as people start commuting again, will cars once again be king? Right now, it is mostly geared towards by sort of tradition, the way drivers use the streets. I'm Amy Scott, a look at the fight to end car supremacy next time on Marketplace. Tune in for Marketplace weekdays at 6 on Radio IQ. Support for our broadcast day comes from Flora Pettit Attorneys at Law, business and litigation attorneys providing practical and responsive advice to clients throughout Virginia, Charlottesville and Harrisonburg offices, fplegal.com. And from Virginia Relay, a public service that enables individuals who have hearing loss or difficulty speaking to connect over the phone. More at varelay.org. Radio IQ is broadcasting in digital on WVTF Roanoke, WRIQ Charles City, Richmond, WURV Richmond, WVTU Charlottesville, WVTW Charlottesville, WVTR Marion, WISC FM Wise, WQIQ Spotsylvania, WIQR Lexington, WEHC Emory, WLUR Lexington, and in Richmond on 92.5 and Fredericksburg on 94.9. Radio IQ, a service of Virginia Tech. A year ago today, the world was stunned by the killing of George Floyd. Calls for police reform ricocheted across the globe, including in New Zealand. There was a huge kind of upswelling of popular support for the campaign against armed police patrols that I don't think would have been there if there hadn't been this popular public consciousness. Also today, Chinese tourists are flocking to the Xinjiang province, where the country stands accused of human rights violations. But that's not on the travel brochure. It's all purposefully hidden. It's kind of like this Disneyland effect where you go in and you see what is you're meant to see. I'm Carol Hills, and mining companies in Brazil have had free reign. Bolsonaro and the government see indigenous territories as up for grabs. A judge now says they're not up for grabs. Those stories and more ahead on The World. This is the BBC News with Fiona MacDonald. The U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blink. For a moment of silence or personal prayer, and remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Good afternoon and welcome to our meeting for May the 25th, 2021. Regular meetings are held on the second and fourth Tuesdays of each month at 3 p.m. Public hearings are held at 7 p.m. on the fourth Tuesday of each month. Deviations from this schedule will be announced. Because of the present state of emergency and until further notice, members of the public are urged not to attend Board of Supervisor meetings in person. All are encouraged to view and participate in meetings through electronic means. Meetings may be viewed online on RVTV Channel 3 or on the county's website at RunoCountyVA.gov. And, and it can also be accessed by clicking the Watch Board Meetings Online. Prior to and during meeting, citizens are, uh, may share comments by email to djax at runoutcountyva.gov or by phone at 540-776-7278. When submitting comments, please include your name and address. Comments submitted by email and by phone will be read aloud during the meetings, subject to reasonable time limitations. For those individuals who desire to attend meetings in person, Please be advised that seating modifications and limits have been established 
in order to facilitate social distancing. Attendees who are not of the same household must sit six feet apart and attendance in meetings will be limited to 25 individuals. Item A of our agenda is our roll call. A a item A1, Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Here. Mrs. Hooker? Here. Mr. Norworth? Here. Mr. Radford? Present. Mr. Peters? Here. Item B is a request to postpone, add to, or change the order of agenda items. Board members? Mm -mm. Seeing none, Mr. 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 O'Donnell? No changes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Lubeck? I have no changes, sir. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Item C is proclamations, resolution, recognitions, and awards. Um, item C1 is a, rec a resolution gradu uh, congratulating the Glenver High School girls swim team for winning the Virginia High School League Class Two Championship. And I normally will join the supervisor down at the podium, but I'm gonna let Ms. Hooker carry on the uh, Glenver show today. <laughs> so, welcome to everyone that's here. And I'm gonna allow Ms. Hooker to introduce the school personnel and attendance and so if we are starting with the swim team, I believe. And so, Coach Hall, would you like to come up? And the rest of the swim team. Are, is it okay if we do that, if we have them go ahead and congregate up here? Sure. Okay. Come on up. <clears throat> Mike on. So this is Coach Shannon yeah. Hall, and I'm going to ask him to uh, say a few words, if you would like to, and just recognize this team before we go on. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, thank you, Ms. Hooker, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. Um, we have six of our eight championship swimmers with us today. Um, I had a chance to read the resolution, and I believe it speaks pretty much for itself. This is a great bunch of girls to, to coach. Um, I can't think of, of any word to describe them other than absolutely great. Just the greatness is, is the word. Two, two years in a row, they've won the state championship. We have six of our six of the eight were back from last year. Um, one thing that that I kind of like to say that that wasn't said in the resolution was I took the uh, took the incentive to average the grade point average of these eight girls together. I thought that might be something interesting to do. I kind of knew where it was going to be, but I wanted to do it. Three point nine two. Oh wow! So you guys are awesome. They are. Yeah. Are you going to take it from here? I will Mr. say, Chairman? Madam Clerk, if I can have you read the resolution. Resolution congratulating the Glenver High School girls swim team for winning the Virginia High School League Class 2A championship. Whereas athletic comp competitions are an important and integral part of the team curriculum at schools in Roanoke County, teaching cooperation, sportsmanship, teamwork, and athletic skill. And whereas on March 6, 2021, the Glenver High School girls swim team won the Class 2A Team State Championship at the Christiansburg Aquatic Center. The girls scored 287 points. The top runner-up Strasburg score of 209 points. And whereas individually, Reese Duncanberger won the 100-yard freestyle championship for the third consecutive year and the 100-yard backstroke. Claire Griffith won the 50-yard freestyle title for the second consecutive year. Relay state champions in the 200-yard medley relay were Reese Duncanberger, Isabella Pope, Adriana Hall, and Claire Griffith. Relay state champions in the 20-yard freestyle relay were Reese Duncanberger, Delaney Eller, Carly Wilkes, and Claire Griffith. The state champions in the 400-yard freestyle relay were Delaney Eller, Carly Wilkes, Natalie McMahon, and Adriana Hall. And whereas during the state championship swim meet, the Glenver girls won 23 medals, broke four school records, and Reese Duncanberger set a new state record in the 50 yard freestyle. And whereas the team represented their school and community with great character, poise, and sportsmanship, they are a true asset to Roanoke County. And whereas the Highland Highlanders are coached under the dedicated leadership of coaches Shannon Hall and Daniel Smith, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Roanoke County, Virginia, does hereby extend its sincere congratulations to the members of the Glenver High School girls swim team, seniors Reese Duncanberger and Isabella Pope and McKenna Scherer, J. 
Juniors Delaney Eller and Carly Wilkes, sophomores Claire Griffith and Adriana Hall, and freshman Natalie McMahon. Be it further resolved that the Board of Supervisors extends its best wishes to the members of the team, the coaches, and the school in their future endeavors. Are you gonna? Um, I'd like to make a motion, motion. Mr. Chairman, yep. if I could, to pass this resolution honoring this team. All right, I'll make a second. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. P Mr. Radford? A congratulatory yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Peters? Yes. Awesome. Any, any comments from members of the board? Yeah, I'd like to just comment the uh, Excellent athletic performance, to say the least, as the resolution says. But, Coach, that was a great point about the grade point average, 3.92. You know, uh, that's for those of you that are going to college, you, you can keep that up. You're going to graduate with honors from a university one day, and I hope that that's true. Uh, you outperformed my, my youngest son, who just graduated from Virginia Tech. He only had a 3.91, so I'm going to tell him that the swim team at Glenver outperformed him academically when, I, when he gets back from the beach this weekend. So girls, keep up the good work. So I was just going to say something else to Coach. I know that some of these uh, girls actually missed graduation practice to be here today. Oh, so this was an important day. Uh, we want to honor you. And we thank you for being here. You make us proud. You know, Glenver is a great place to go to school. It's a great community. Mm -hmm. And it's because of you all that gives us so much pride in our community. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for that. Anything else? Does anybody want to say anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's swim with a little shot. <laughs> <laughs> Martha, you want to offer to you? All right, as we continue with the Glenver show, um, item C2, <laughs> resolution, congratulating the Glenver High School girls indoor track team for winning the Virginia High School League Class 1A, 2A championship. And so I have uh, at least a couple of coaches here. If y'all would like to come on up, please. Miss Becca Loder is the head coach. And the rest of the team, the indoor track team too, please. <laughs> and swimmers. <laughs> we did a little bit of both. Thank you. Awesome. So would you like to say anything Becca, um, before sure, we begin? Yeah. I just want to thank you guys for having us here. I don't know if I'm as well prepared as Coach Hall is to uh, talk, but these girls were phenomenal. Actually, two are missing. The other... Um, leg of the relay team but only took four girls to state and an anchor I mean sorry and a um, alternate and these girls kind of swept the board they went out there and they gave it their all and we took the state championship home with <coughs> of them so and then in the meantime you know the other two were swimming and I would say if the grade point average was 3.92 then we're pretty much right there at the same so since Sydney is my daughter I Keep an eye on that. Right <laughs> <laughs> so, but we just like to thank you guys. It's an honor. It's been fun over these past few months to be able to get out and do this, not knowing we would even have a season, and this is what they accomplished. So, <coughs> thank you guys very much. 
Mr. Chairman? Madam Clerk, you'd like to read the resolution. Resolution congratulating the Glenver High School girls and or track team for winning the Virginia High School League Class 1A slash 2A championship. Whereas athletic competitions are an important and integral part of the team curriculum at schools in Renwick County, teaching cooperation, sportsmanship, teamwork, and athletic skill. And whereas on March 3rd, 2021, the Glenver High School girls indoor track team won the class 1A, 2A team state championship at Liberty University. The girls put up 65 points to outdistance a Squanison score of 58 points, I'm sorry. And whereas junior Delaney Eller is a part of the 4x400 four relay team and came in third in the 500 meter, junior Carrie Harrell is a part of the girls' 4x400 four relay team and came in third in the 500 meters. Sophomore Sydney Loader is the state champion in the 55 hurdles and a part of the 4x400 four relay team. Sydney took second in the 300 and third in the high jump. Junior Carly Wilkes is a two-time 2020 and 2021 state champion and record holder in the 1600 meters. She's also the state champion in the 1000 meters and a part of the 4x400 relay team this season. Every relay team has to rely on an alternate that can come in and assist in time of need and senior daily Umbarger has been a major contributor to the relay teams over the past two years. Whereas the team represented their school and community with great character, poise, and sportsmanship, they are a true asset to Roanoke County. And whereas the Highlanders are coached under the dedicated leadership of Coach Becky, Becca Louder. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Roanoke County, Virginia, does hereby extend its sincere congratulations to the members of the Glenver High School girls indoor track team, Delaney Eller, Carrie Harrell, Sydney Loader, Daly Umbarger, and Carly Wilkes, and be it further that the Board of Supervisors extends its best wishes to the members of the team and coaches and the school in their future endeavors. Thank you. I will just add at this point, I'll make the first uh, comment here is that the team before this team and this team, they are just a group of high character individuals. You know, if there was um, something that we could be most proud of, their academics are stellar. Their performance athletically is stellar. Their character is awesome. Mm -hmm. We're proud of you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Like Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Noworth? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Any other comments from members of the board? Yeah, I just want to add, uh, so uh, my daughter was on the indoor track team, state team for Hidden Valley back in the day around 2012, so definitely was there the day that happened, so mom, I know, coach, <laughs> I, know. I know that's exciting <laughs> to do I both of those. Both. But that was, that's fantastic. Great accomplishment. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll follow you forever. Thank you guys very much. Mr. Moore. Yeah, congratulations again, ladies, and uh, best wishes for next season as well as whatever you pursue after high school. Um, I ran indoor track in high school when I was in Nelson County. We ran at the VMI Fieldhouse, and mm -hmm. our team won uh, second place in the 880-yard relay, and I got a ribbon for it. Today, I think people get ribbons and trophies and all kind of things, resolutions, but uh, so I identify with running indoor track. And also, uh, one of the members on the team that I ran with uh, was a, a senior at the time when I was a sophomore, and he later coached football at Glenver High School, Coach uh, Lindy White from Amherst. So uh, just a little trivia there for you folks to take home with you for whatever that's worth. Congratulations. Just congratulations. And I want to ask the young ladies, who, young women who are also on the swim team, how did you find the time to both, to, to handle yeah. both of these efforts? Because I, I can remember when my son was swimming and I remember we would get up at 5.30 in the morning to get 
you know, pool time at, at the, whatever pool he was using. And then if you have to run, um, how did you do it? <laughs> and keep a high grade point average. Because <laughs> I want to congratulate you on that, however you did it. Uh, I wish you could bottle it, because that's fantastic. <laughs> so we've already had the motion. We've already voted on it. So I think we're ready for pictures. Yep. Thank yep. you. Yes. Item C3 is a resolution congratulating Jake Klein Glimber High School of Glimber High School for winning the Virginia High School League Region C Championship in Wrestling. Ms. Hooker. Thank you. So Coach Klein, Jake, if you all would like to come up, please. So uh, Mr. Jake Klein is also the father of Jake had the honor and privilege of coaching his son. And just a quick note about Coach Klein is that he was a two-time state champion at Grundy. And so he has, he has the stuff. And he was able to, to uh, teach it to his son. And it, it seems like it's a real um, familial thing once you start and you have that heritage. But would you like to say a few words? Sure, yeah. So first of all, I want to thank the board uh, for having us here today. Uh, it's a huge honor to be here, and you know it was a really a year of adversity across the board. We weren't sure if we were going to have a season. We weren't sure how the how you know the competitions were going to go, but Jake overcame lots of adversity. Undefeated season as a sophomore, uh, honor roll student, and state champion. So we're super proud to be here, proud of the efforts that have gone in, and we thank you very much for this opportunity. Absolutely, Madam Clerk, would like to read the resolution. Resolution congratulating Jake Klein Glenver High School for winning the Virginia State High School League Regency Championship in Wrestling. Whereas athletic competitions are an important and integral part of the team curriculum at schools in Roanoke County, teaching cooperation, sportsmanship, teamwork, and athletic skill. And whereas on February 22, 2021, Jake Klein scored on a two-point takedown just seconds into his match and never, never gave up the lead as he earned a 6-3 decision over Clark County in the 132-pound weight class and defeated three returning state place winners on his way to winning his first state title. And whereas Mr. Klein finished the season with an undefeated overall record of 10-0 and had an outstanding postseason where he won the Regency Championship for the second year in a row. And whereas Mr. Klein is proud to be an honor roll student and active in his community. Whereas Mr. Klein represented his school and community with great character, poise, and sportsmanship. He is a true asset to Roanoke County. And now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Roanoke County, Virginia does hereby extend its sincere congratulations to, to Mr. Jake Klein, State Regency Champion, and be it further resolved that the Board of Supervisors extends its best wishes to Mr. Klein, the coaches, and the school in their future endeavors. Ms. Hooker. I'd like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman, to pass this resolution honoring Jake Klein. Do I have a motion? I mean, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Rafford. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney. Yes. Mrs. Hooker. Yes. Mr. North. Yes. Mr. Rafford. Yes. Mr. Peters. Yes. Comments from board members? Yeah, just one comment. Uh, Jake, thank you for listening to your dad. <laughs> what a huge, just what a huge accomplishment. Uh, trusting your dad's skills and, and all that. Just a great story. Great story. Congratulations to both of you. 
I'll just I'll just make one more um, comment before we take pictures again. But um, this is another gentleman, young man, who is of high character, a high quality individual. He's the kind of um, student that you would hope your child would be. And so we're just really proud of you, Jake. Thank you. Thank you. Let's clap. Thank you. Item C4 is a resolution congratulating Carly Wilkes, Glenver High School, for winning the Virginia High School League Class 2A Championship in Girls Cross Country. Again, Ms. Hooker. So, Carly, would you come forward, please? So um, I just wanted to say a few words. Thank you. Do, would you want to go first, Amanda? Why don't you give us a, a few words, if you would, please? <laughs> all right. Um, I also just wanted to thank you all for allowing us to be here today to recognize um, Carly and her accomplishments in cross country. Um, I think it's safe to say that she has had her eyes on this accomplishment, or this goal, I would say, since probably seventh grade. Um, and she has worked hard every single year, putting in a ton of effort in the off season, you know, swimming, running, biking, any, any kind of, you know, uh, cross training she can possibly do in addition to running. And, um, you know, her freshman year, she was third in the state. Her, her sophomore year, she ran a faster time. She was fourth, but she ran a faster time overall. And then this year to come out and win after, like Coach Klein said, a season of adversity is pretty amazing. So Carly, we just want to congratulate you on your accomplishments. Absolutely. Madam Clerk, can you read the resolution, please? I have a little bit of oxygen left. Good. <laughs> <laughs> resolution congratulating Carly Wilkes, Glenver High School, for winning the Virginia High School League 2A Championship in Girls Cross Country. Whereas athletic competitions are an important and integral part of the team curriculum at schools in Renner County, teaching cooperation, sportsmanship, teamwork, and athletic skill. And whereas on April 22nd, 2021, Carly Wilkes won the class 2A state meet with a time of 18.13.5, breaking the tape 103.1 ahead of her next closest competitor. Her time was the fastest among all the state champions across all classifications in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And whereas due to COVID-19 restrictions, the school was unable to host organized practices or provide training workouts for athletes. This setback did not deter Carly as she took it upon herself to reach out to a previous cross country coach at Virginia Tech and they developed a training workout regimen for the off season. And whereas once the season officially kicked off, Carly won the girls' race at the Allegheny Quad Invitational and achieved her pre-race goal of running a sub-18 minute 5K. She is not, she's not only reached her personal goal, but broke the course record by 50 seconds with a, with a time of 1749. Carly ran in the Pole Green Spring Championships in Richmond, where she set yet another personal record of 1726 winning the race by 25 seconds. And whereas Ms. Wilkes was chosen as the 2021 Girls Cross Country Gatorade Player of the Year for the Commonwealth of Virginia, which is one of the most prestigious award in high school sports. And whereas Ms. Wilkes represented her school and community with great character, poise, and sportsmanship, she is a true asset to Runnett County. Now therefore be it resolved that the Board of Supervisors of Runnett County, Virginia does hereby extend its sincere congratulations <clears throat> to Carly Wilkes, the Virginia High School League 2A champion in girls cross country, and be it further resolved that the Board of Supervisors extends its best wishes to Ms. Wilkes and the school in their future endeavors. So I wanted to say just a couple of things before we um, before we vote because I wanted to do a little background on what the Gatorade Award really even involved. 
And so um, it covers all public and private schools in Virginia and is based on athletic accomplishments with a nod to academics and public service. Wilkes, a junior who is being recruited by multiple Division I schools, won the VHSL Class II cross country meet in a time of 18 minutes, 13 seconds. The Glenver sensation added the Class II title to the gold medal she took last fall in the Pole Green Invitational. Uh, she uh, helped to team state championships in February in the Class II indoor track and swimming meets. So this was some of the blurbs from the newspaper about all of this. It seems that there was one time when you ran a track and then in the same day or maybe the next day swam Probably. in a meet. <laughs> No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Again, you know. <laughs> so she personally has a GPA of 4.17. Wow. So she is the wow. real deal, and we're proud of you. Absolutely. So do I need to make a motion? Yes, mm -hmm. Make a motion to approve this resolution, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Mahoney. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. <clears throat> Any other comments from members of the board? Yeah, I, I want to make one more comment. Um, I am a Carly Wilkes fan now, and the reason why is my uh, younger sister uh, <clears throat> did the very same thing you did. She won uh, the 2A championship, uh, then she went to another school, and they ended up having to run in 3A back in the day in the in the 80s. And she went on to college and uh, achieved All-American. So I'm thinking you're headed along that same path. And uh, just great success to you. Keep up the, the hard work. It'll, uh, it'll reward you one day. And thank you. I do want to congratulate all the um, <coughs> folks from Glenver on a job well done. And also, um, you know, this year we didn't know what to expect, but you persevered through. And I think that it also has thrown a challenge out to uh, Northside, to William Byrd, to K Spring and Hidden Valley to get it together. So, <laughs> but thank you for being here. Uh, and thank you for everything you're doing. Mr. Chairman, may I make one more comment? Absolutely. Since I haven't talked enough yet. But I would just like to say one of the greatest things about having this opportunity to really highlight these students and what they've done and what they've achieved is that in a bleak, dark time of COVID, it was just such a breath of fresh air to be able to see the success and the joy of competition. And so you've made us proud. Thank you for being Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item D is a request for public hearings and first reading of rezoning ordinances. This is a consent agenda. Approval of these items does not indicate support for or judge the merits of the requested zoning actions, but satisfies procedural requirements and schedules the public hearing, which will be held after recommendation by our planning commission. Item D1 is a petition of Secure Store LLC to remove Crawford conditions on approximately 10.064 acres zone C2C high intensity commercial district with conditions and to obtain a special use permit for a mini warehouse located adjacent to and south of 925 North Electric Road. This is in the Catawba Magisterial District. Are there any questions? If not, I'll recognize the lady from Catawba. Mr. Chairman, I would like to move approval. All right, I have a motion to approve the first reading and we're we'll scheduled the second reading for June 22nd, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. A couple seconds to my <laughs> couple seconds. left. <laughs> Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? <laughs> yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item E is a second reading of ordinances. Item 
E1 is an ordinance approving a lease with Fort Lewis Mountain Company LLC for e ingre ingress and egress for a private road access communications and information technology equipment. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. There was been no changes except for the presenter. <laughs> yeah, much, much improved. Because <clears throat> he's on vacation, I believe. No, he's back. Oh, well, he is? He was, oh. Yes. And he couldn't come see us. I know. Well, bless his heart. <laughs> uh, I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. All right, Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Item F is appointments. Are there any appointments need, uh, that have not been given to the clerk? No. Seeing none, we'll move, on, move on to item G, consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered by the board to be routine and will be enacted by one resolution in, in the form or forms listed below. If discussion is, is desired, that item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Is there any item the board would like to have removed? If not, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Rafford. I have a second. Second. Mr. Mahoney. Madam Clerk, if you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Item H is citizens' comments and communications. Um, I do not have a yellow sheet, but I understand, understand Mr. Scaff is here to speak to us. Mm -hmm. Yes. I left his yellow sheet. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, William Scaff, 4815 Farmington Place Court, Roanoke, Virginia, 24018. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My statement is entitled, The Anti-American Origin of Town Center Density Development, Part 1, United Nations Devises Town Center Density Development Ideology to Extort Developed Nations. Town Center Density Development, currently promoted by the Roanoke County Government, is a community planning concept that has a history. It originates in the anti-Americanism of the United Nations. Its intention is to reduce the standard of living of developed countries, particularly the United States, and guilt them into channeling the resulting unused cash to developing countries. UN propaganda promoted implementation by socialist control of land through government planning and intrusive regulations. The UN's assumption is that it is simply too costly for so few people to live on so much land in developed countries. They just don't deserve it. By herding people into density, densely built town centers, it will cost them less to live and thus be more, according to the UN, quote, sustainable. They can then afford to pay more taxes, which their government can redistribute to developing countries. This will be done through developed country sustainable development grants and concessions coerced by the UN. The story begins with UN Habitat I in 1976 whose declaration on human settlements specified that, quote, governments must maintain full jurisdiction and exercise complete sovereignty over land with a view to freely planning development, unquote. Complete governmental control of land shall make possible, quote, a planned coordination between orderly urban development and the promotion and location of new developments, unquote. This will be accomplished through, quote, zoning and land use planning, legal controls, and fiscal controls. Tellingly, government planning, the government planning process includes, quote, economizing land by fixing appropriate densities, unquote. The notorious Agenda 21 produced by the UN Earth Summit of 1992 elaborated these so-called sustainability principles and motivated acceptance of them worldwide. The document was signed by 179 nations, including the United States. It begins with the inevitable call for global redistribution of wealth. 
quote, the objectives of Agenda 21 will require a substantial flow of new and additional financial resources to developing countries, unquote. Specifically, a total of $1 trillion from developed countries, nearly $2 trillion in today's dollars. Then comes the attack on American prosperity, quote, Consumption patterns are very high in certain parts of the world. This results in excessive demands and unsustainable lifestyles. Therefore, developed countries should take the lead in achieving sustainable consumption patterns." Unquote. <clears throat> Town center density development is introduced as the mechanism to eventually achieve a widespread urban transformation in developed as well as developing countries. Quote, Policies and strategies should be implemented towards the development of intermediate cities, unquote. Town center density development becomes the primary planning objectives. Objective, countries should, quote, <clears throat> conduct reviews of urbanization processes and policies in order to apply urban planning and management approaches specifically suited to the needs of their growing intermediate-sized cities, unquote. The ultimate result is, quote, facilitating the transition from rural to urban lifestyles and settlement patterns for rapid and sound urban growth, unquote. Countries would use socialist planning approaches to implement the urban transformation, such as fiscal incentives and land use control measures, including land use planning solutions, even the encouragement of commun communally and collectively owned and managed land. Uh, this is what Agenda 21 looks like. It's still in print. 348 pages telling us how to live. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, do you have anyone else signed up to speak? I have no one else signed up to speak, but I do have a letter um, from a Bill Overstreet that he wanted read. Okay. If, if, if I run out, y'all just come over and pick me up. And set me back up. <laughs> uh, my name is Bill Overstreet, and my wife is Linda Cheek. Mr. Peters, you kind of stole my thunder with your close of comments reference to dispatchers two weeks ago. But at least we are the same mind. I was planning on talking about the dispatchers two weeks ago today, but with my wife and I in quarantine to go see our grandkids that weekend, I had to wait until today to talk to you about this and add to, add to your introduction of the dispatchers and better pay. March 1st, I got out of bed and fell back in bed in cardiac arrest. My wife woke up. As a retired physician, she recognized my agonal breathing, got out of bed, grabbed her stethoscope, and determined my heart had stopped. She called 911 as she began CPR. Dispatcher Simmons answered the call and gave my wife instructions on CPR until the rescue squad arrived. When the rescue squad arrived, they did an assessment and used the defibrillator to get my heart working again. They then took me to RMH. Dispatchers sit behind the desk as a go-between between the public and responding agencies. They have to be professional and keep a cool head when talking to the public. That person who may be calling to the dispatch center may be irate, hysterical, or frantic over the situation. The dispatcher needs to be able to calm that person down to get the pertinent information to send the proper agency, police, fire, or rescue. I know this because I was a dispatcher on the Blue Ridge Parkway from 1979 through 1989 and then moved on to other park departments. Dispatchers do not get any acknowledgement of a job well done or an attaboy, attagirl, etc. They sit behind that desk for 12 hours and put up with the calls that come in and do not usually know what the outcomes are. In my case, Dispatcher Simmons was professional in assisting Linda in, going, in doing proper CPR and saving my life. After six days in the hospital and being released and a week of rehabilitation, I wanted to recognize Station 5 for their job well done. I found out which shift came to the house and what day they would all be at the station. On that day, Linda and I went to the station and met the five men that came to the house. We thanked them for saving my life and presented each of them with a large pizza as a thank you. A couple of days later, I advised Linda that I needed to do something for Dispatcher Simmons. I contacted Martha Hooker and told her what I needed to do. 
She contacted Bill Hunter, who contacted me. I advised Mr. Hunter of what I wanted to do for Dispatcher Simmons. On the day set up, we went to the dispatch center to meet Ms. Simmons, presented her a plaque of a certificate of appreciation for saving my life. This is my way of acknowledging the dispatcher of a job well done. We showed our appreciation to the entire center with a lunch of pizza. I contacted the county administrator and asked him what could be done to raise the salaries for dispatchers. He advised me that county employees will be getting a cost of living and he would also look into the market area on 911 centers on how their dispatchers are being paid. I would hope that you, the board and county administrator, can meet and achieve a salary over the market rate to maintain the employment of the professional dispatchers that we have in Roanoke County. Also, please look into some type of award system like the Red Cross does once a year for 911 operators, either monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually, with a certificate or monthly gift to show your appreciation for a job well done at the center. Any questions or comment, feel free to get my home number for Mrs. Hooker to call me. Sincerely, Bill Overstreet. Thank you. Ms. Whitaker, did you have any other any phone calls? Thank you. <clears throat> um, item I is reports. Do I have a motion to receive the following reports? So moved. So Mr. Mahoney, do I have a second? Second. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. North? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. <clears throat> Item J is reports and inquiries of board members. Today we begin with Mr. Radford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just got one message uh, that I really want to uh, sort of bring to light, and that is in the last couple of weeks, uh, we have seen the CDC guidelines change. We're seeing a gradual uh, coming back to a little bit of normalcy. Uh, when I was chair, we went into a, a big, a big cocoon with, uh, with, with COVID and all the restrictions. So it's really great to see things are starting to opening up. And so if any residents are, are watching this or watching it on a replay, the, the main reason for talking about this is that we've got a country that is just starting to turn on the gas pedal and we need our workers back in our jobs. Everywhere I go uh, in, the, in the region, there are help wanted signs uh, in, in all kinds of different industries, especially my industry, which is construction. So <clears throat> I uh, uh, encourage uh, as, as we get to open up Virginia more, uh, I think May 28th, the governor is going to come out and, and uh, relax some more restrictions. So we'll be able to uh, to, to get a little more uh, heated up with the economy. But just wanted to pass that along. Uh, anybody that's sitting on the sidelines waiting for this, it's almost over. We will welcome you back. Uh, we need workers. We need, need you back into the game. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mahoney. Nothing, sir. Mrs. Hooker, you've had enough tonight. I've had um, enough. <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. You know there is one thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, just one more. One more thing. Uh, a shout out to Chief Griffith because his daughter was involved, and I didn't want to single him out with everyone else's, but I know you're proud, and we're proud of Claire, too. I wonder why he's back there smiling so big. He was smiling big. Yeah. Mr. North. Uh, just a couple comments. I was noticing in our package that the economic indicator of local sales tax has risen to 4.6 percent, yet it could be so much more probably if everyone was back to full employment. Mm -hmm. And so it can only continue to grow and go upwards. And so that's a good sign that it continues to be positive. And uh, just to indicate that I joined our chair today at Glade Creek Park Greenway Ribbon Cutting, uh, that used to be referred to as RCCC Ball Field, I guess, and I, I coached, I coached in uh, <clears throat> baseball down there and it was kind of nice to go back and see that area has been cleaned up and renovated a bit and it's going to connect the greenway to the gish mill which will connect on into the vineyard park area so uh, it was a fine morning there in uh, Vinton this morning well, that's all okay I have no comments for the day so we will move on to item K which is our work session Work session to review with the Board of Supervisors the CARES Act final expenditures and provide 
an overview of the American Rescue Plan Act. Following that, we will go into closed session. Um, we, I move that we go into closed session pursuant to the Code of Virginia, Section 2.2-3711.A.1 of the Code of Virginia, discussion, consideration, or interviews for prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, um, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, discipline, disciplinary, uh, resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of the public body, namely to discuss the terms of the board's contract with the county administrator. And under section 2.2-3711.A.1, discussion, consideration, interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, and resignation of specific pu public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body, namely the county attorney's performance evaluation. Do I have a second? Second. Madam Clerk, you call the roll. Mr. Mahoney? Yes. Mrs. Hooker? Yes. Mr. Norworth? Yes. Mr. Radford? Yes. Mr. Peters? Yes. Now the board will recess to the third floor for work session and closed session.